Hi everyone, welcome back to science. I'm Miss Catherine. Let's get started with lesson 3.2 in our Matter and Energy and Ecosystems Unit. In addition to our typical materials today, um, if you have available to you a large sheet of paper and 30 small little game token type items. Um, it would be great if you had those in front of you as we're gonna play um, a little bit of a game today. Um, and that large sheet of paper can be used for you to make a game board for yourself at home. And those 30 small objects or tokens can be used for you to move around the objects on that game board that you make for yourself at home. Um, and what I mean by a game token is just any small object really that you can move around. They don't have to be 30 of the same thing. Um, you could have a couple of um, dice, for example, and then a couple of Monopoly houses and some other like sorry game board token. Um, it really doesn't matter what they are. They also could just be tiny little strips of paper or little pieces of paper that you use as well um, so that you can move them around and track carbon today as we play a game that involves carbon in an ecosystem. Um, if you don't have any of those things, that's okay. I'm gonna play the game um, on my screen and you can follow along with me as I do that. One thing you will not see on our list today that you will not need is access to Amplify online. So even if you are able to get into Amplify, um, don't worry about doing so today as everything that we're going to do uh, will be centered around the game and that piece of paper that you already have. So um, here is your heading for your paper for today. I did put the click path up here just so you know where you are. Um, but again, I won't be having you go into Amplify Online today to do any of those things. We are going to, again today, consider this investigation question that we started last lesson in 3.1. And that is if the amount of carbon changed in one part of a closed ecosystem, what happened to the carbon in the rest of the ecosystem? And last time we began considering this question in the context of a reading um, titled Carbon in the Global Ecosystem. And through that reading, one thing that we uh, learned that was new to us is that carbon uh, moves and cycles around an ecosystem, kind of like water moves and cycles around an ecosystem as well. We know that water can evaporate um, and go from Earth's surface into Earth's atmosphere. We then know that water in the atmosphere can change from a gas to a liquid um, and then rain back down to the surface again through precipitation. Um, and we made a connection to this carbon cycle as something similar where carbon can move around between both the abiotic and the biotic parts of an ecosystem. And the article informed us that human activities like the burning of fossil fuels for energy um, is a way that humans have changed the way this carbon cycle naturally occurs on Earth's surface. And one of the um, annotations that we made in our reading last time focused on this idea that Earth is a closed system um, because things or matter or stuff isn't leaving um, Earth and going out into space and things from space aren't really coming into Earth either. Um, so the amount of matter, the amount of stuff is, is remaining the same, which is why we consider Earth a closed system. And remember, our biodome is also a closed system uh, because what is in there stays in there. And this article reminded us that carbon isn't being produced or it's not being um, used up. The total amount is not changing. So if it's increasing in one part of the system, it must be also decreasing somewhere else. So for our warm up uh, thinking question here today, I'd like you to pause the video and I'd like you to reflect on our investigation question and answer that question um, as best as you can at this point. So if the amount of carbon changed in one part of a closed ecosystem, according to the article, what happened to the carbon in the rest of the ecosystem? 
Remember, this investigation question is important to our problem of the failed biodome experiment of the Econauts because the biodome did not have enough carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, which then caused the producers to not be able to produce enough energy storage molecules through the process of photosynthesis, which then resulted in the plants and the animals not having enough of those energy storage molecules that they needed uh, to conduct cellular respiration and therefore have the energy that they needed to grow and live and reproduce and survive. So as we consider this question today, um, if the carbon is changing in one part of the closed ecosystem, like we know it is in the atmosphere of our biodome, then what happened to it? Where did it go? And how could we help the Econauts uh, prevent this problem in a new biodome that they plan to build? So to help us track this movement of carbon, we are going to play um, the carbon game today. Um, and our goal in this carbon game is to keep all of our producers, our consumers, and our decomposers from running out of carbon. Um, so in other words, our goal is in this game to prevent what happened in the Econauts biodome. And as we play this game today, um, we're actually gonna see the way carbon moves through that carbon cycle within the ecosystem. And we're going to need to pay very close attention to the amount of carbon in each part of our ecosystem um, in order to achieve this goal of nothing running out of carbon. And we're gonna need to make sure that our organisms have enough of this carbon to survive, as again, carbon is an important atom in those energy storage molecules. Um, so this is what our game board today is going to look like. Um, and once again, it is familiar uh, to me because it reminds me of the sim and the models that we have been making. We have our abiotic matter in the air represented at the top. We have our producers, our consumers, our decomposers in the middle, and then all that dead matter down at the bottom. If you are planning to follow along at home and play the game at home in front of you, this is how you are going to set up that large piece of paper that you have. Um, so you will make these uh, five categories, air at the top, producers, consumers, decomposers in the middle, dead matter at the bottom, okay? And those are really the sections of your board that are most important. All of these little numbered circles that you see uh, within each of those sections aren't as important. You can put them in there if you'd like. It'll help you keep track of the carbon, but it's not necessary. So at this time, if you are planning on following along at home, pause the video and make your game board. All right, so the way this game is going to work is that we are going to use those tokens that we talked about uh, to represent carbon, okay? And my tokens on the screen are gonna be black dots uh, because carbon in the images that we have been seeing in this unit is represented by a black dot. So I'm going to use those. Uh, your tokens at home are gonna be whatever those objects, uh, whatever they are that you found around your house, okay? And you are not going to have available to you these action and event cards. Um, but you're going to get these cards from me on my screen as I'm playing the game as well. Um, and to start the game, we're going to need to set up our board and we're going to draw um, some action and event cards to kind of get things rolling here together, okay? Um, so we're gonna learn how to play the game as well as play the first round of the game at the same time together, because uh, I think that makes more sense than you just listening to me on how to play and then play. Um, we'll learn and play together. So the first thing that we need to do is place six tokens in each region of the ecosystem. So those are those five categories that you set up a moment ago. Um, so I here's my game board. And I'm going to go ahead and set up my game board as well with six tokens in each of these five areas, okay? And so as you can see from what I'm doing, those little numbered circles here, like within producers, 
Um, they're just helping you keep track of the carbon um, within that section. Again, on your game board at home, it's not um, super critical that you have um, eight little numbered circles there in each of your five sections. What's more important is that you have the five sections and that you're doing um, exactly what I'm doing right now and setting up your tokens so that you have six within these categories um, of air, producers, consumers, decomposers, and dead matter within your game board. Remember these tokens, mine are these black dots, yours or whatever you have at home. These tokens are representing carbon atoms. So we're starting off with an equal amount of carbon atoms in all of these components um, of our ecosystem. So remember the point of this game um, is to keep everything alive, to keep them running out of carbon. Um, and in order to do that, we're going to need to know where the carbon is. Um, and another um, reason why this game is going to be helpful for us is that it's gonna help us answer this investigation question and really be able to track where carbon is going throughout an ecosystem as the result of different events and things that occur. All right, so we're gonna keep um, record here both before and after our game of what is the amount of carbon within the abiotic matter of our ecosystem, the bionic matter of our ecosystem, and then the entire ecosystem as a whole, okay? So if I go to my game board, um, let's do abiotic matter first. I only have one section of abiotic matter. I only have one section of non-living things, and that is the air. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six tokens, because um, that's how I just set it up, okay? So biotic matter, this is referring to all of the living things, okay? So if I go to my game board, um, it's not just how many is in producers or consumers, um, it's all of this. So all of this is considered biotic matter um, because all of these things are living or were once living. So if something is dead, that means it was once alive. Um, so we're gonna consider that to be biotic. And I have six tokens in each of these categories and there are four categories. Um, of biotic matter here in our ecosystem. So I'm gonna take six times four, perfect, 24, um, for the number of carbon atoms in biotic matter. Um, and then I also wanna know how many um, total uh, carbon atoms I have um, within the entire ecosystem, both abiotic and biotic matter. So if I add those together, 24 plus six is 30. Okay, so I'm going to have that recorded. Um, and when we're finished playing the game, we'll reflect um, on what happened in the game by doing the exact same thing. Okay, so our game board is set up. And when we play the game, we're going to draw an event card. And event cards are uh, naturally occurring events within the ecosystem. And when we draw the card, we're going to read what it says. And then we are gonna consider what is the effect of that event within our ecosystem? How did this event impact where carbon is uh, within the ecosystem? So our first event card right here is in green and it says that animals munch mushrooms. So I have some consumers eating decomposers. So I have some animals eating mushrooms, okay? Um, you know, I like mushrooms on my pizza, you know, so that, that would count in that. Um, in that category. Um, so the card is telling me to represent this naturally occurring event. We need to move matter from decomposers to consumers, and it's telling me to move specifically three carbon, um, because if a consumer ate a decomposer, then it means it took some of the matter that was in a decomposer and moved it with inside um, itself, um, its consumer, okay? So on my game board, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna move those three carbon tokens from decomposers to consumers. If you are following along at home right now, you're gonna wanna do the same thing on your game board. So it doesn't really matter which ones you move and where you move them to as long as you're moving three. So there's one from decomposer to consumer, two, 
and three. And I'm just gonna hang that third one out here. It doesn't have a numbered circle, it doesn't matter. Again, that's why I said those numbered circles um, aren't super critical, okay? So now I have moved three carbon tokens from decomposers to consumers to represent that event of a consumer eating a mushroom. All right, so now we're gonna consider an action card. And the action cards are actions that we as humans could choose uh, to take within our biodome, within our ecosystem. Um, and so we're gonna have two at all times to choose from, okay? And so right now we have two actions that we can choose um, to make, okay? One says turn on grow lamps and one says increase humidity. And when we make the decision of which action we as humans um, want to take, we want to consider where things are in our ecosystem. What would be um, the most benefit to our living things um, by making sure they have the carbon that they need to survive? So when we decide which action to take, we're going to consider that, okay? So if I um, choose to turn on grow lamps, that's gonna mean that producers do more photosynthesis and we're gonna move carbon from the air to the producers. So if I go back to my game board, if I choose to turn on the grow lamps, then that means this carbon from the air, two of them will go down here to producers, okay? The other action that I can choose is to increase humidity. And humidity again refers to the amount of water vapor, the amount of moisture in the air. Um, and if I do that within the biodome, within this ecosystem, that means that decomposers um, eat more and reproduce more. Um, and so remember, decomposers get their energy storage molecules from dead matter. So this will move dead matter, um, move carbon, excuse me, from dead matter to decomposers. So if I look at my game board, that means I'm gonna move um, three, from dead matter to decomposers, okay? So I wanna ask myself, which one of these actions would be more beneficial to the living things within the ecosystem? What do you think? Well, I think moving from dead matter to decomposers um, and do then, doing that by increasing humidity um, will be best here because my decomposers, they're, they're running a little low here on their carbon. Um, so I'm gonna choose to take this increase humidity action. Um, so if you're following along, we're gonna pretend like we increased the humidity and we are going to see the effect of that by moving three carbons from dead matter to decomposers uh, because mushrooms and decomposers, a lot of them really uh, thrive in moist and humid environments. So now, oh, I'm gonna do that. Okay, there we go. So now we're gonna consider what is the overall effect of those actions and those events that we just took um, in terms of having high and low amounts of carbon in each part of my ecosystem, okay? So if we were in the classroom and if we were playing this together, you would have this large version of the instructions in front of you. Um, but since we're not in the classroom, unfortunately, together playing this game, um, I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger here on my screen um, so that you can see, all right? And so when I'm looking at where it says effects of high and low carbon, and again, I wanna consider um, some other effects of all of the movement we just did with our event and with our action. It's having me really focus on areas that are high or low in carbon. High is an area that would have more than eight. Um, low is an area that would have fewer than four, okay? And so when I'm looking here, I have here in my consumers, I have more than eight carbon tokens. I have nine, okay? So I'm gonna read what it says here under consumers. If you have a high carbon amount, more than eight, what that means is that more consumers eat 
producers and perform cellular respiration. Okay, so I have more of these. Um, so that means they're gonna eat more producers and produce more cellular respiration. So as a result, I'm gonna move one carbon from producers to consumers, and then one carbon from consumers uh, to the air. So on my game board, I'm gonna move one from consumers, move one uh, from producers, excuse me, to consumers, okay? So one from producers to consumers, okay? And then I am also moving one from consumers to the air. Consumers to the air, okay? And then I also, down here in my dead matter, I have fewer than four. So I'm gonna read down here what it says to do if you have fewer than four. Um, so if you have fewer than four, it means that decomposers do not have enough carbon from dead matter to survive. So you're gonna move one carbon from a decomposer to dead matter uh, to represent that dying off of a decomposer because it didn't have enough carbon from the dead matter that's there. So I'm going to do that here on my game board. And again, if you're following along online, I'm sorry, you're following along um, in person, not online, with your game board, um, go ahead and check your board to mine. Um, so based off of the um, events and actions and effects that just occurred, we now have seven carbon in the air, we have five in producers, we have nine in consumers, five in decomposers, and four in dead matter. So now we're ready to draw another event card, okay? So I have one here ready to go. So I'm gonna draw that new card. I'm gonna move it over, because this is this is our new event. We already, we already did this animals eating the mushrooms, so now we're on something new. And this one says, extra rain for plants. Producers do more photosynthesis if there was some extra rain. So to represent that, we're gonna move three carbon from the air to the producers. Okay, so three from the air to the producers. So there's one from the air, two, and three. Okay, so that is a naturally occurring event. Um, there was some extra rain, so we therefore had a little bit more photosynthesis and therefore moved some extra uh, carbon from the air to the producers. Perfect. Now, we as humans are um, going to choose um, to take some action in our ecosystem based off of that event. So we still have this option down here. Remember, we're always gonna have two options. We didn't turn on the grow lamps last time, and so that one's still there. And I'm gonna draw a new action card. And this new action card um, is saying that I can choose to feed producers to consumers, okay? So I could maybe give this rabbit here um, some extra grass to eat. And if I make this choice, I'm going to move energy storage molecules are gonna transfer from the producer to the consumer. And I will represent that on my board by moving two carbon from producers to consumers. Um, so right now we have a choice. Which action is going to help our ecosystem overall? So take a look at the game board Take a look at what will happen as a result of either of these actions and ask yourself which one is going to be most beneficial. Well, I think this feeding producers to the consumers is going to be most beneficial um, because when I look here, even though I have a lot going on in consumers, um, I also have a lot going on in producers. Um, and so if I turn on the grow lamps and my producers do more photosynthesis, I'm gonna move more carbon from the air. And then my air is not gonna have a whole lot of carbon left. And remember that was our big problem of the biodome. And we want to prevent that um, from happening here again. Um, so I am then going to move two carbon from producers to consumers. So if you're following along, go ahead and do that. All right, now 
we need to consider, well, what are the effects of that? So I wanna look at my game board and I want to identify areas that either have more than eight or fewer than four carbon tokens. And right off the bat, again, I know my air has fewer than four carbon tokens. So if I have low carbon in the air, I'm gonna read um, what is gonna happen um, as a result of that. So low carbon, fewer than four in the air, means that producers do not have enough carbon from carbon dioxide to make energy storage molecules. So I need to move one carbon from a producer to dead matter um, because our producer died off there. It didn't have enough, um, there wasn't enough carbon um, in um, the atmosphere for it to help make those energy storage molecules, okay? And so then now I wanna continue to identify any areas that have more than eight or fewer than four. And it looks like my consumers here have um, more than eight. So let's read what happens if there's high carbon in consumers. Um, it says more consumers eat producers and perform cellular respiration. So I need to move one carbon from producers to consumers. One from producers to consumers. Oh man, it's getting crowded. And then I wanna move one carbon from consumers to the air. Um, so I have more of them, they eat more. That's why I moved from producers. Um, but I also have more of them, so they're breathing out more. And that is why I need to move one up here to the air. Okay. So now we are ready um, to consider another event, okay? So I have one um, down here ready to go that I'm gonna draw. And this one says um, animal disease, okay? So the, again, this is something that naturally can happen. Animal disease. Um, carbon in consumers transfers to dead matter because I have a disease in my animals that kill off um, some Consumers, so I'm going to move three from consumers to dead matter. Okay, so let's do that. One, two, three. Okay, and then now I need to draw a new action card. I'll move that down here with the other. Okay, and then I want to decide which action, oops, which action I want to take. Um, do I want to feed mushrooms to consumers? and move from decomposers to consumers, or do I wanna turn on the grow lamps, okay? Well, let's check. One says move from decomposers to consumers, from decomposers to consumers, or turn on the grow lamps and go from the air to producers. Well, this one's kind of a hard choice. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna say, let's just feed some mushrooms to consumers. So I'm gonna move two carbon from decomposers to consumers, okay? So two from decomposers to consumers. All right. And then now I wanna consider what's the effect of that. So I'm looking for areas of more than eight or fewer than four. So it looks like I just have more um, in consumers. So again, in that case, move one um, from producers to consumers and move one from consumers to the air. Perfect, okay. Um, and so if you're playing along at home, um, what I'm going to do right now is just show you um, another event and another action. Um, that you can play with on your own, um, but I'm not going to do it on my board for um, the sake of time, okay? Um, so if you're following along, you're going to make these choices or make these movements. Otherwise, if you're not, you can just think about um, what would this do, okay? So here's an action of consumers eat more producers to fatten up for the winter. So I'm moving three from producers to consumers. And let's draw another action card. This one says to cut down overgrown producers. And then take a look at your effects chart. Is there any motion that you need or any movement that you need to make? 
And let's draw one more event. It's a wildfire. Producers to the air. And another, oh, where to use that one. Another action you could choose to take. So start a compost or um, reduce consumers. And then take a look at your effect chart. What effect did those events and actions All right, so great job thinking about and tracking this motion of carbon on our game board. Um, remember at the beginning, we looked at how many uh, carbon were in abiotic, in biotic, and in the entire ecosystem. Um, so let's check on that right now. So let's go to abiotic matter. How many do we have? Okay, well, I have three on my game board. You might have a different amount if you were um, doing more events and actions on your own at home. And so biotic matter, let's count those up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Okay, so 27 total. And then now for the entire ecosystem, uh, it's the entire biotic and abiotic together. 27 plus three is 30. Take a moment to compare carbon and where it was both before and after the game, what do you notice? And then as we wrap up today, I have four reflection questions that I would like you to consider. Um, so when you're ready, pause the video, answer these four questions, and then I will see you again next time. Happy reflection.